You know, from the Islamic perspective, we are told that we need to separate, you know, young people from sleeping together in the same bed from the age of 10. In other words, you're trying to say that already they are beginning to understand their own sex and sexuality. You cannot worship properly without, you know, uh, cleaning yourself. And part of that cleaning has to do with, you know, one's sexuality. If I had a wet dream, if I met, you know, with a woman or a woman met with a, you know, young, young boy. So all those are issues of sexuality and you cannot shy away from speaking about issues of sex and sexuality because if you do, then implicitly what you're trying to say is that you have not prepared somebody to worship, you know, you know completely, uh, you know. So discussing issues of sex and sexuality are a must for religious communities. From, from my you know, point of view, I think we need, you know, as different you know, sectors, to engage with religious communities. I think we only engage religious communities when it comes to social mobilization. No? I think we can go beyond social mobilization and use the rich teachings within you know, uh, the faith sector to um, influence behavior change. And I'm, I'm, I know we can do it um, uh, effectively. Uh, just to give you an example quickly, you know, the Baha'i Faith in Zambia have got a very good program called Junior Youth Program. It's one of, you know, the most successful programs in terms of youth engagement where even issues of sex and sexuality are discussed. Mm -hmm. There is an example of how when faith is tapped into, it can bring uh, quite a lot of, um, you know, beneficial dividends.